We're gonna call this casualties of a content creator. I literally recorded the entire video of my first impressions of Amwaj's Atars and lost all the audio for that video. Of course I did because Kuba is one and only and if he's gonna fuck up, he fucks up well. So this is going to be my re-first impressions recording of Amwaj's Atars, which I want to tell you that, wow, just roll my motherfucking music so I can re-record Amwaj's Atars. Blessed morning, my beautiful peoples. You know who it is. It's your boy. C to the U to the B to the A. Ah, <sighs> everybody thinks, oh, all you gotta do is record a video and upload it to YouTube and you get mad views. Yeah, it really works that way. So Amwaj was gracious enough to send a lot of creators, including myself, Amwaj's new Atar lineup. So the package came beautifully wrapped in Amwaj wrapping paper with a pretty bow on it. And I didn't know what to expect. I knew that they came out with this Atar line because I follow them on Instagram and then doing heavy promo. Now what I know from Atar fragrances, which isn't a lot, is that a little bit goes a long way. And obviously, since this is the second time recording this video, I can confirm that no matter which fragrance it is in this sample kit, a little goes a long way. I mean, power. Now this is what the samples look like. They're numbered one through six, and they're all very thick, oily fragrances in a dabber. Now I hate dabbers, I like sprayers, but apparently Atars are maybe a little bit more difficult or, or harder when it comes on to sprayers. And even the full bottle presentations come with like the little dabber stick. Apparently, according to the website, is literally what you're supposed to do is just dab on pulse points, kind of tap together, and just let the body chemistry and that heat do all the work for you. Now, in the presentation comes a list of the perfumers, including Cecile Z, which is a monster, in my opinion, one of my favorite perfumers in the game. And she created three of them. And then we have, I'm gonna chop their names up, Dominique Rampignon, which I have one of his fragrances there. Beast. And Julian Raskinye. I, I don't, I'm not familiar. I probably smell some of your fragrances, but I really don't look up perfumers like that. That's not what I'm about. I'm not a real reviewer. And these are the six fragrances in the pack. So we're going to start off with the top, which is Oris Wakan. Then there's Rose Accor and Vanilla Barca, Incense Rory. Saffron Hamra and Oud Ulia. Now I'm gonna start off with the one I like the least. I'm gonna do it reverse. I was doing chronologically in my first impressions, but this one I'm gonna start off with the one I like the least. I was able to find the notes of these fragrances on the website after I recorded the video. And this one, number six, which is Oud Ulia, is the one I am not going to be putting on my skin. Now this was made by Cecile Z and I love Cecile Z and I know what she was going for when it comes to this fragrance. But I'm not here to cap or front or lie to y'all. This shit is for only animalic, beastly oud lovers. This smells like the most natural, thick, dense, animalic, barnyardish oud that you can imagine. This is ridiculously powerful and if you do a dab of this on your pulse point you will smell like you just had an orgy in the bronx zoo it is very very dense and very very thick i know somebody who would absolutely love this my boy a shout out to the homie if he smells this he will bathe in this entire vial in one day there's people who will love these animalic beast raw ouds that they live for it this is a fragrance that can easily last you 24 plus hours, no cap. It's that strong, but it's very specific. It is not good to my nose. It has savet in it, so we all know that butthole secretions just doesn't work for the kit. I mean, the only butthole I'm smelling <laughs> is mine when I pass gas. So, Oud Ulia consists of birchwood, Oud, castorium, savet, and vanilla. It was made to be wild and it is a hundred percent wild with incredible performance but not good for me at all i mean at all so for me this is absolutely my least probably will never get anywhere in this sample my opinion next one so number five is saffron hemra 
Saffron Hamra is exactly what you would imagine it to be. A beautifully spicy saffron rose oody fragrance with mild freshness, but really it just revolves around a rose and saffron base. It is a crazy fragrance. Let me re-snort this. These are so strong, dude. Like, wow. Beautiful fragrance. It's a more a dense, thicker rose fragrance that's really catered to cold weather only. It has a little bit of an essence of like ambery nuance in it, but very minimal. Again, it's just a spicy rose fragrance that's dense and thick, and it has this kind of Middle Eastern quality about it that makes it kind of, kind of regal in a sense. Like the green rose nuance in here is very beautiful, and it's very delicate. It's very delicate and dense at the same time. I want, if I were to rate this fragrance, particularly on a scale from one to 10, obviously one being shit, I would rate this one uh, about a six. It doesn't blow me up. It doesn't blow my mind as far as the scent profile is concerned, the power and performance of it on my skin, because I still have remnants of shit all over my body, because it's a re-record, is incredible. Next one. Number four is Incense Rory. And wow, let me tell you that this only smells like incense. It's incredible. Like, I hate these, I hate these dabbers, but this is how these guitars come, even full bottle presentation. What blows me away is how you're able to get the essence of incense smoke in liquid form like as a regular layman person who's not a chemist I, I don't understand the compositions or how they put this together it's pretty incredible how strong and perfect of an incense fragrance this smells like like if i were just to burn some incense in my crib, wow this is strong if i were to just light some incense in my crib it smells like this fragrance just is consistent of Incensey, birchy, cedar, green, oody, with a bit of like red pepperish oil. This one is a beautiful fragrance. It's very intriguing, it's very alluring. Another one that should only be worn in cold weather. Also, this one is such a complex, niche, snobby fragrance that would be very much appreciated by someone who loves that incensey, woody smell. Next one. Now the next one is up there with one of my favorites. This is Vanilla Barca. Now, Vanilla Barca is just that, vanilla. Only vanilla and nothing but vanilla, kind of. It's sweet tonka, vanilla, and olabdum. That's it, that's all that it has it listed as, and it's perfect. It's a perfect vanilla fragrance with power and like performance. It's smooth, it's creamy, it's haagen churned ice cream, it's sexy, it's thick, it's robust, it's the most natural vanilla Dominican extract that you can taste in a flan. It has an edible quality to it. It has a sex appeal about it. It has a very beautiful, robust unisex quality. And it, it's stellar. I think it's one of the more beautiful ones in this collection. And if you're a vanilla lover, this will blow your socks off. Again, a little goes a long way. This is literally a couple of drops and keep it pushing. Next one. Spoiler alert. This one is my favorite from the six fragrances. And believe it or not, it's a rose-based fragrance. You guys who follow me and are loyal ball sprayers know what time it is. With rose, I'm 50-50. If it smells geriatric and about to collect senior citizen benefits, I'm not fucking with it. But if it smells youthful and you can make rose smell sexy, I'm all about it. And Cecile murdered this shit out of the ballpark. This one is rose accord. Killer rose fragrance, insane. It's Cecile Z DNA. It's sexy, versatile, bright rose, and it smells like rose petals sitting in a field with like brisk air just running through it. Have you ever seen those examples of a car in a wind tunnel and the wind is perfectly coating the car just to make sure it's aerodynamics is on point? This is how it feels like this wind is just aerodynamically flowing through rose petals, smelling incredible. So you got rose, sandalwood, olabdenum, and white florals is what you get out of this. But it's so sexy and beautiful and masculine for a rose fragrance that it blew my balls off. Like if there's any fragrance that I want from this lineup, it's this one. Some just dripped on my finger and I'm not even mad at it. I don't know if you guys can see the sheen and shine on my finger right now. Look at that shit. It is 
that that right there is gonna, is gonna last me a month. It's crazy. If you take like the sexiness of Memo's African Rose, blended it with Initio's Atomic Rose, and you just made it thick, dense, beautiful, and even more natural smelling, is what you get here. It's like a mass appeal rose bomb that I think is crazy. If you can get a sample of this somehow, please do yourself a favor. If you're a rose lover, you gotta check this one out. Last and certainly not least, and that is number one, which is Oris Wakan. Oris Wakan is the craziest Oris fragrance I've ever smelled. I've never encountered such natural, realistic Oris smell ever. It's potent, it's strong. You have that powdery nuance that you would expect from Oris. It has this musky dryness, and for some reason, it gives me some amber greasish type vibe. I'm gonna be honest with you, my first impression of this one wasn't great. But obviously I'm re-smelling this and this tends to happen sometimes, especially when you do first impressions, that your nose starts to change, the fragrance starts to develop, it really works with your skin and your skin chemistry and it really changes. And this ended up going up to the top three after it had time to settle down. It's Oris, it's beautiful Oris, so it's powdery, it's violety, it's musky, it's sandalwood, it's crazy. It's actually very, very beautiful. Again, this one started off as some like, nah, and it really worked its way up to being like, damn. If I were to pick three from this lineup, number one would absolutely be Rose, Accor, or Akar, however it's pronounced. That one would absolutely be number one, and the fight for number two would definitely be between Vanilla Barca and Oris Wakan. It's, those two can interchange at any point. I think this lineup is particularly set for a enthusiast, a perfume lover on the artistic aspect, a person who indulges in Atar. There's people who are like cult followers of Atar fragrances and this is for you. These are very simple made fragrances in the sense that none of them has more than four notes listed in them, but all those four notes seem to be executed at like the highest level. Like you reach the final boss level of any video game that you play kind of thing. They're simple, direct to the point. They all perform, I mean, through the roof. They're all individually simple yet complex. They all have a density. They're all very robust. They all have their own individual characteristics. And other than that animalic beast, they're all pretty incredible. They're gonna be very expensive fragrances, but as I previously stated, it's literally drop, 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 and keep it pushing. Like, it's not gonna be something you gotta do 15 sprays to get that beast quality. You're gonna get the beast quality on drop. So, so that, what, 100 ml or 50 ml, whatever bottle it is, is gonna last you a significant amount of time. Shout out to Amash for allowing me to smell these joints, and I'm definitely getting that rose joint, and I'll see y'all bitches next time. You know what is biggest in the gang. Cheers. Who's best? One of them's gonna pass the test. Tell them. Who's best? For the fly gun, hold a money folder. Roll the roller, start attack when it's time to call back. Oh. For the rough, rugged, and raw way, this nigga Jay, it's a game, but he don't play. Hey. For all the chicks that got dead in the penthouse, sweet on top of my mom's crib. Hey. It's long since you never get in. It's long since you would think that you would. <laughs>